It's been a tumultuous 72 hours in the football world. We've seen the rise and fall of the European Super League. We're here outside Richmond Park with Kevin Cray, St. Pat's fan, a long time St. Pat's fan, to discuss the wider implications of this with the football fans, football clubs going forward. Yeah, so on Sunday what came to light was that uh, the superpowers in football, some of the biggest clubs, uh, some of the most marketable clubs in, in European football from Italy, from Spain and from England, decided that they were officially going to break away in the European Super League. Uh, so what this means is that 12 teams plus another, tr plus another three will be permanent fixtures in the league. Uh, then there'll be another five invites. Um, and essentially what this means is that it'll be a closed shop There'll be no way of entering this league once it's once it kicks off. Essentially, um, the money shared between them from um, investment bankers J.P. Morgan is astronomical. It's a way in which uh, football clubs are looking to maximise their profits um, in relation to the clubs that are that were selected as such. They're not even the most always the most successful clubs. They're clubs with the biggest marketability in different markets around Asia, around the United States and other places where the brand is bigger than anything else um, and essentially what this means is that the owners of these clubs want to be able to essentially have games in different cities post-Covid where they can kind of brand and market the clubs whatever way they see fit without any input of the supporters um, and as we saw yesterday evening because of the pressure from supporters in the cities that these clubs are from, particularly in England, this whole thing has seemed to have fallen away now. So it seems to be a case where they're taking the, the meritocracy, as bad as football is in inequality with the finances from the big clubs down to the lower clubs, there was a, spare, there was a sense of at least meritocracy-wise you could achieve Champions League football, you could achieve Premiership football. So can you talk about the implications this would have had and where we're at now with fans going across the world, considering we've seen the power of the fans' movement that they could stop this in the tracks within 72 hours. Can you tell if they can build on this as fans and what we can start talking about in the wider game and who owns the game and who it's really for? Yeah, so I mean, essentially, the Premier League and other, and other European leagues, as they stand at the moment, potentially you could have a Grimsby Town get into the Premier League and reaching the Champions League, potentially. You know, it's not realistic in the financial sense, but it's realistic because of the pyramid scheme in which football, in particular in England, is set up. But when, you, when it comes to, uh, to what this would mean in the long run, you know, you have to take it back a little bit. Owners of these clubs have no connection to these clubs in general. They see these clubs in some cases as a plaything and in other cases as a way to make as much money as possible. So in reality, I think what happened was that a lot of owners undermined the, uh, the reaction of the supporters. There was leaked documents that said that owners were okay with kind of you know, stepping on the toes of historical supporters because they're looking at new markets. That shows how little they think of supporters. But when supporters took to the streets over the last couple of days in anger and in protest, it scared the hell out of the clubs. As I said, I think they, they undermined the reaction and how much this would mean to supporters. So what that means then from here, you could argue that it shows that supporters have power, like anything, you know, when, when people get feet on the streets, things change, you know. And it shows the supporters have a lot of power in their hand, more so than they think they more so than they would think otherwise. So what I think this does mean is that it's an opportunity to push for essentially the German model, which is the fifty plus one. So it's fifty percent uh, fan ownership plus one share. So that means that in Germany you have more input from fans, you have lower ticket prices, and you have essentially a more democratic structure within the club. 49.99% of a club can be owned by a billionaire, but the fans will still own the majority. And I think in relation to legislation, I'm led to believe that in England, Boris Johnson is already looking at, at this kind of thing. Um, I think it's the only way to, to go realistically uh, in, a, in a league like the Premier League or bigger leagues like in Italy, because with a competition and with the finances already there it wouldn't be viable to have a hundred percent fan ownership but a 50 plus one works in germany and i think it can work in other places as well now i know shamrock rovers in ireland and a few other clubs have experimented with fan ownership and to be on a good uh, 
on a good quality and a successful level. So it, do you think there's an opportunity now to, for the Irish state to actually reinvest, to grow Irish football and to create legislation that will put all the professional clubs in Ireland with a 50 plus one fan ownership and will this encourage people, do you think, to reinvigorate the League of Ireland? which is a sport that's been left on flatless place for the working class in a lot of places. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's a good opportunity for football fans in leagues all over, and particularly here in Ireland. And you look at, historically, the league's been forgotten about. The former FEI CEO, John Delaney, called the league a problem child, you know. So he doesn't care about the league, and the government don't care about the league. Michal Martin uh, tweeted yesterday about challenging this uh, European soccer league. He, he, he has a, he has a, a successful but struggling club in his own constituency that he's never he's never cared about. So will the government take action? Probably not. But I think it's an opportunity for clubs and for supporters to be able to push for, for this kind of reform, you know. And I think when, when supporters get back into the grounds and League of Ireland supporters are quite militant anyway. So I think it's an opportunity when supporters get back into the grounds to be able to kind of fight for, for this kind of um, this kind of base. I mean, at, at Pat's here, you know, there's one owner, but there is a supporters group called the Patron Saints, who are essentially like a safety net for the club and help out the club in, in ways where where possible. And I think the the idea of the Patron Saints was always to um, to kind of be in a, a strong enough position that if anything ever happens, that they, they, they can be there to, to take control of the club. They're not there yet, but... When you, have, when you look at Bowles, who've always been a, a members club, and Rovers, as I said, are a members club as well, it's, it, it's the only practical way in Irish football to help grow, because, it, again, it gives, more, um, it gives more democracy to a club if supporters can have a genuine say and if supporters can have an input into how their day-to-day -day club is run. And when you look at things realistically, like a lot of, a lot of talk about the European Super League... Um, happens on Twitter and on social media and a lot of people who talk about this aren't proper football fans in the sense that they wouldn't be actively supporting their local club you know when you when you support your local club it's different it's not just football it's about the club it's about the community and it's about everything that that comes along with it the heartbreak and the ups and downs you know so I think what that means to to, to League of Ireland fans is that in reality we want to see as successful as possible as a league as we can because the FEI aren't going to do it for us even with our recent reforms the government aren't going to do it for us and it's up to the supporters I think and the clubs themselves to fight for these kind of changes